In a significant development, BrahMos Aerospace has started the range extension of BrahMos Air launched missile, which would enable it to strike enemy targets at more than 800 kilometers. India has already enhanced the range of the BrahMos missile to 500 kilometers with just an upgrade in its software. Officials have said that the Indian Air Force has equipped 40 Su-30 fighter jets with the BrahMos air-launched cruise missiles and has moved them from the Tanjavur Air Base in southern India to the northern sector with China. BrahMos Aerospace is also working on a 1,500 km range BrahMos missile that will initially be a land-based missile, and once the system is proven, it will be followed with air-launched and naval variant with minor modifications. The DRDO and the Indian Air Force is all set to conduct the first test of the Astra Mark 1 air-to-air -air missile from a Tejas Mark 1 fighter jet, while the Astra Mark 2 will start its fast-track development come user trials from a Su-30 fighter jet in the second half of 2022. The DRDO has already conducted three tests of a missile powered by solid-fuel ducted ramjet propulsion from a land-based launcher and the next test of the SFDR-based missile will be in air-to-air -air mode, which means that the Astra Mark III will also conduct its first test in the coming months. The RDO officials have said that the SFDR-based air-to-air missile will be a real capability leap, as it will have a maximum speed of Mach 4.5 and a range of 350 km. Hindustan Aeronautics and French engine manufacturer Safran held a groundbreaking ceremony for a new joint venture facility known as Helicopter Engines MRO Private Limited today, and both companies have also signed a strategic memorandum of understanding during the ceremony. It has a 1,000 square meters training and office facility, and a 3,800 square meters international class shop facility, that will provide MRO services for both Safran TM333 engines and HAL-built Shakti engines installed on indigenously built helicopters. The DRDO chief has said that the Rustam 2 medium altitude long endurance UAV has successfully demonstrated an endurance of 18 hours at a flight altitude above 27,500 feet last week, and it will achieve the required 18 hours endurance at an altitude of 30,000 feet by mid of May 2022, and will be ready for user trials with the Indian Army and Indian Air Force. The DRDO chief has said, that the CVRD and private sector firm Lawson and Tubro have started working on the first light tank prototype, and has already started procuring armor steel and other systems and tools for the program. The light tank will weigh under 35 tons, and will be based on the next generation main battle tank chassis, and will be equipped with a 105mm gun and a 7.62mm coaxial machine gun, and will have Stenag level 4 ballistic protection. The light tank will be fitted with a high-altitude operable power pack of 1,000 horsepower, and it will be capable of firing multiple ammunition. Due to the ongoing situation in Eastern Europe, the implementation of the deal for 6.1 lakh AK-203 rifles signed with Russia has been delayed by at least few months. As part of pre-production activities, retrials were scheduled to be done with ammunition from the original equipment manufacturer in Russia in the first half of February 2022, but due to the current situation, they have been delayed by at least four months. The production activities has started in India, but manufacturing of rifles will start after the trials, and will reach full-scale production within two to three years. The Ukrainian Soria Mash project gas turbine engine factory was destroyed yesterday, and this is significant as around 30 naval ships of the Indian Navy use Ukrainian gas turbine engines, and they are sent to Ukraine for overhaul. Prime Minister Modi held a meeting of the Cabinet Committee on Security yesterday, during which he was briefed on the latest developments in Eastern Europe as well as issues in the maritime and air domain, and Prime Minister Modi said that every effort must be made to make India self-reliant in the defence sector, 